Hello. In this video, we're going to look at an example for a numerical trait. So we're going to do a one-sample t-interval, which is a confidence interval for a mean, and also a one-sample t-test, so a hypothesis test for a mean, where the standard deviation for the population is unknown, and we're given data, but we're, we have fewer than 30 data values. So the central limit theorem does not apply. Right? Now we're going to look at an example that we had already looked at um, and if you don't recognize this and you aren't sure how to use your calculator, check out this video. It's titled Using Your TI to Find an Info Box and Check Representative Sample Condition. That will get you up to speed, so I'm not going over the calculator part of how to find the info box and how to find the check the representative sample condition. So, here then, when we did this example, we got this info box. All right, and I went ahead and figured out the standard error, S over square to N, because we're going to use that for you know, both the confidence interval and hypothesis test. But um, So now let's carry on. We're going to do, let's go ahead and check conditions, because conditions will be true. We're going to need those for both the confidence interval and hypothesis test. So in the other video, we showed that the normal probability plot was uh, very linear. The histogram was symmetric unimodal with no outliers. The box plot was symmetric, had no outliers. So representative sample was here. Representative sample was uh, met. The 10% rule was met. Independence, the age of one mother, uh, when delivering her first child isn't going to affect the age of another mother's age when she delivers her first child. And random selection. So we're good to go. Let's go ahead and start on our confidence interval. So let's say we do a 95% confidence interval. And remember, we're going to start with the sample mean and add or subtract a margin of error, which will be t times the standard error of the sample means. So we get this information, most of it, from our info box. So y bar is 24.5. That's our sample mean. Plus or minus, we're going to have to look up t. And we already found standard error is 1.056. Now let's look up the T multiplier, our degrees of freedom, 14, and we're going to look up 95% confidence. So 95% confidence, 14 degrees of freedom, my multiplier is 2.145. And then when I add and subtract this, go ahead and put this in your calculator, you should get about 22.235 to 26.76. So you'd say, with a 95% confidence, the average age of women when they deliver their first child is between and let's round it 22 point, let's say, 2 to 26.7 years. Okay. Hold. All right, there's our confidence interval. Now let's go ahead and do a hypothesis test. And let's say we're going to test the claim that the mean age of women when they deliver their first child is 24 years old, with the alternative that the mean age is less than 24 years old. All right. So we're going to do that. So when I set up my hypotheses, I'm going to say mu, the average age of women when they deliver their first child, that's what that symbol means, is 24 years old or it's less than 24. And again, less than, that was given to us in the problem. All right. Now we have our info box. Let's go ahead and and I just trans jot that down over here. We have y bar is 24.5. Uh, let's go ahead and put standard error. That's what we're going to need is 1.056 and n is 15. And let's get started. So we already checked conditions. We saw that in the first part of this video. So what that means now is I'm testing that here's mu 24 and my standard error, I'm going to just use 1. I'm going to round that to 1. So if I kind of round that to 1, I have 25, 26, 27. If you wanted to be precise, you could add 1.056 plus another 1.056 plus another 1.056 and subtract, subtract, subtract. But I just round because I'm looking for a general idea. 
of what the sample means should be. Right? So the idea is 68% of my sample means will have an average age of between 23 and 25. 95% of my sample means will have an average age of between 22 and 26. And 99.7% of my sample means understood of 15 women at a time, you know, their average age, their age when they deliver their first child, is going to have an average for the 15 women of somewhere between 21 and 27. All right. So then we test this with a sample that we actually took in reality. And it falls right here. All right. And now we shade to the right. So even though my sample fell, I'm sorry, we shade... Yeah, we shade to the left, sorry. We shade to the left because it's less than. Even though my sample fell to the right, my inequality, since I wrote this as a sentence here, my inequality says shade to the left. So I actually have to do this, shade to the left. Right? So now when I go find my t-score, I say how far is my sample value, right? how far is this from what I'm assuming is the mean over the standard error. And so how far is 24.5 from 24 over, now I'm going to use the more precise 1.056. And I get 0.4735 standard errors away. And I put that into TCDF. I'm going to put in negative 100. Remember, I'm coming from here all the way to here. So from negative 100 to 0 0.4735. And then the degrees of freedom is 14. And when I put that in there, I'll get about 0.68. Let me go ahead and show you that just in case. So I would go to second bars, go to TCDF, right? put in negative 100, comma, 0.4735, comma, 14, and there it is, 0.6784, so I rounded to 0.68. Right? Now that is my p-value. And it's extremely high, which we knew. This is half the curve, so that's already 50%, and then we have some more area. So we know it. that's about right. So what do we do? We know that, let's look at our conclusion, the p-value is much, much higher than the significant level, alpha. So 68% was an extraordinary rate, much, much higher than the rejection rate of 5%. So we do not reject the retinol. Our model predicted what was going to happen at an extraordinarily high rate, so I don't want to reject the null. Right. Now remember, if I do not reject the null, I'm saying this is possible. So this is not likely to be true. Right? So I'm going to say there is not enough evidence that the mean age of women when they deliver their first child is less than 24 years old. Right. So we're saying there's not enough evidence. The average age of women when they de deliver their first child is less than 24. Now, the last point I want to make with this problem is a few connections. So, let me show you that we're done with the hypothesis test, but I wanted to show you that when you look at your info box, and we had, <laughs> when we had an info box, you can kind of go back, I seem to have, oh, let's place my info box, there it is. Right, we did all this in the calculator, but let me show you how you did this much earlier in, in the semester. So obviously if you take all your values, and these are the same values that were given to you here, if you add them all up and divide by how many there are, you'll get your 24.5. That's x bar or y bar. But here's the more interesting one, the standard deviation of the sample. If you now take every value, each value, and find out how far it is from the mean, and now you've got those distances, and you square those distances, right? So this is y minus y bar, and this is y minus y bar squared, all right? When you square those distances, and then add up all those squared distances, divide by one less value, you'll get this, and then you take the square root. There is your 
standard deviation that you did by hand. All right? That's how we used to do it. And now we're just saying do it through the calculator. So remember, the standard deviation is the square root of y minus y bar squared sum of all those divided by n minus 1. All right? So this that you did by hand is really what your calculator is giving you. All right? Thanks so much for listening.